Thank you. I'm still on. Is this the pranking part? Is this what this is? All right, there we are. Here I am. Here I, here I are. Here you are. Here we are. All right. So a uh, force Gump goes to heaven, and uh, Peter meets him at the gate and says, uh, well, uh, we got a new test for entrance into heaven. Uh, you got to answer three questions uh, before you can get in. Uh, just to make sure that, that you're good to go. So you got to tell us uh, three things. You got to tell us uh, how many seconds are in a year, how many days of the week begin in T, and what's the name of God. And Forrest Gump says, Mom always said life was like a final exam. It's hard. But I know the answer to those questions. He says, okay. He says, well, let's start with, uh, let's start with the first one. Uh, how, many, how many seconds in a year? And uh, Forrest Gump says, there's 12. And Peter looks at him and says, 12? And he says, yeah, January 2nd, February 2nd. That's right. That's right. He says, all right, all right, all right. It's not the answer I was looking for, but you're right. So I'm going to give it to you. He says, all right, well, how many, what what are the days of the week that start with uh, the letter T? And he says, oh, well, that's that's today, tomorrow. And he says, oh, uh, again, not what I was thinking of, but sure, sure, that, I, I guess that counts. So I'll let you do that. Uh, he says, well, you're, you're two for three, so one more and, and you can come on in. And he says, well, what are, what's the name of God? And he says, I know I learned that in church growing up. God's name is Andy. And he says, Andy? And he says, yeah, we sang a song. Andy walks with me. Andy talks with me. Andy tells me I am his own. And he says, opens the gates of heaven and says, run, Forrest, run. <laughs> so jokes, jokes are, you know, funny, they're unexpected, they kind of put us in this anticipation with a, with a good result uh, coming out of that, and uh, there's something about us that uh, we excite that, we love waiting for that, we, we want to see that, uh, joy and laughter, they, they play this unique part where uh, they, they can disarm us uh, when it's done in the proper context, you know, when, you, when, you're not, when you're creating joy and laughter to not create harm or to belittle someone or something, uh, joy and laughter can be this thing that unites, it unifies, it, it tears down the boundaries uh, that can separate us otherwise. Uh, it can give you a place of, of safety. And, uh, and so this is, this is a day of joy, a day of celebration after we've sat through a Lenten season, after we've celebrated the resurrection of Christ. Uh, today is Holy, Holy Humor Sunday. Uh, the early church, uh, as Emily kind of shared, uh, they knew this. And so they began the custom of having a full week uh, called the Days of Joy and Laughter to celebrate the resurrection. And they would have parties and they would have picnics and they would sing and dance and play pranks and practical jokes on one another because of the ultimate joke that God played on Satan, uh, which is called uh, the Rises Piscalis or the Easter Laugh. Uh, that all of creation has a chance to laugh, uh, laugh in joy and laugh in life, but also laugh against death and against Satan uh, that he was unable to win. And so uh, this is what today is. It is this celebration. So, so we're going to have a little bit of chance later uh, to, to share in some laughter. Uh, it, it's the reason for the loud shirt uh, and some others who have uh, joined in on the fun with their unique clothing. Uh, it's, it's to laugh and to make us smile and to find the humor in that. And so, but the reality is, is, is life isn't always funny or uh, it, it doesn't always leave us laughing. It can lead us into other areas of, of frustration or pain. And uh, just last, uh, this morning, um, uh, when, as I was starting the day, I heard of the shootings that happened in the Jewish synagogue out in California last night. Uh, as they were finishing their season in celebration of Passover, uh, another shooter came and, and um, uh, shot four, is, what is the report I heard at that point, uh, shot four and had killed one. Um, and that is the reality, right? That there is pain, that there is death, that there's heartache, disease, and stress. In fact, even if we go back and watch uh, every, every Good Friday, I go back and I watch Mel Gibson's Passion of the Christ um, because it takes me... Uh, it, puts me in that moment uh, of remembering what Christ has done, that I don't take that lightly, that I don't take it for granted. Um, And yet despite what the story of Christ is, which is the story of the resurrection, he he made that journey, but Mel Gibson's movie maybe gives 10 seconds to the the story of the resurrection. And the the story in the church, in the modern church, we 
we have limited ourselves in the story. And we've talked about this before, that if we stop at the cross, we're not telling the full story of what Christ offers because what Christ offers is the Easter laugh. He offers us the laugh uh, at death and the laugh at Satan that we have a chance to experience and to live in the beauty and the joy that comes in Christ. And yet we still miss that sometimes in churches. Some of us know churches uh, or know church people who, uh, when you look at their life, boy, there's, there's not much joy. Uh, there's, there's more complaining and negativity and, and furrowed brows and uh, whatever when you're around them. And, and uh, what, I, it's all, I'm always intrigued uh, when I spend time with those people because when I leave, it's kind of like I want to shower and just be like, I want to get the negativity off. Uh, I want to get off the, 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 the way they just have, have something to tear down or complain. And you got to find the joy. You got to find the good in something. You can always find what's bad or what's wrong or, or what's going to take you into a, the spiral of, of non-existence or non-life um, and tear other people down. But I don't, I don't see that in the story of what Christ offers. And so uh, we, we have to put the long faces away and, and find a chance to celebrate and a chance to find joy. Uh, I came across this joke or the story that said that uh, Groucho Marx was getting off an elevator and he happened to meet a clergyman. And the clergyman came up to him and he, he put his hand on his shoulder and he said, I want to thank you for all the joy that you have put into the world. And Groucho Marx shook his hands and he replied, I want to thank you, Reverend, for giving me a place where the joy was taken out of it. Uh, and sometimes that's the reality, that, that churches, pastors, the faith has not done a good job of, of instilling a sense of, of joy and excitement. And, and there's a revival that needs to happen, a revival of joy, of trust, of, of faith in God. Uh, Nancy, Nancy reminded me of this. Is Nancy in here? Is she still in the kitchen? Is she still in the kitchen? She's, no, Nancy. Hi, Nancy. Nancy reminded me this week of uh, Ray Stevens' Mississippi Squirrel Revival, right? Uh, right? Of, of, um, and the way the story goes in Ray Stevens' songs, he's always telling this, this humorous story. But this one's of the young boy who has to go down to Mississippi to live with his family uh, for the time being. And he, he's out there being a boy, and he captures a squirrel and puts it in a box. And he happens to bring his box to the first self-righteous church, uh, which is where his family goes to. And so he's sitting there in church, and he, he's showing his squirrel off to his buddy Hugh, and the squirrel gets out. And in that, the squirrel uh, creates this havoc and terror that nobody sees. All they see is the reaction of people responding to the squirrel crawling up their legs or getting in their dress or their trousers or their overalls, and in that, making these exclamations or these confessions. And he talks about how, how in that revival, that church came back to God because everyone uh, didn't know what in the world was going on. There was a movement of the Holy Spirit or the squirrel uh, that was prompting all of this. Uh, and so in, the, in his funny outtake, there, is, there are these outer components that, that need to move us to a place of joy uh, so we can experience revival. And revival in its, in its base sense just means to, to relive, to reanimate life. Uh, and, I, and, and so the reality of the resurrection is that life is animated now. Paul tells us this, that, that Adam stole life from us and he entered death into the equation and Christ has once and for all replaced that death or that fear of death with life and that's not just some time later on that's in the present that we have this promise in the resurrection that we can live in the Easter laugh that we can live with laughter that we can live with the fact that that we can we can overcome things we can overcome uh, the trials and the struggles uh, may not may not mean that they change it may not mean that they go away but in community and in the promise of Christ and the faith and the trust that's there, uh, we can know that joy can rest upon us. And so when, when we're around people, when people look at our life, what is the story that they see written upon us? What's the story that they see in the life that we live? And I thought I'd, I thought I'd share a little bit some humorous anecdotes of, of saints and what some of the weird or humorous saints were known for in the history of of the church. So Saint Isidore is uh, the saint of the internet. Uh, he used to be uh, just the internet, the, the, the uh, saint of education and information, but as technology advanced, uh, Saint Paul, the, uh, John Paul II anointed him to the internet because, uh, well, it's, it is the new information wave. Saint Drogo uh, is, and I appreciate him because he's the saint of unattractive people. So 
we can all rest in the fact that we have a saint who's looking out for us. St. Polycarp of Smyrna is uh, the saint of dysentery, which isn't great, but it's good to know he's there, right? Uh, St. Cornelius, this one's pretty funny, St. Cornelius is, is the saint of twitching. And so people that just can't, and, and it's funny because uh, he was actually sentenced to be beheaded, and he twitched in the process, and the assassinator missed him. And so they had to do it again. Like, try again. Uh, St. Valentine, obviously Valentine's Day, is the saint of greeting cards and hope. Uh, saint Adrian of Nicodema, uh, he is the saint of, and I guess they need a saint too, if unattractive people and people with dysentery have saints, then the saint Adrian is the saint of arms dealers. Because he, like Saul, like Paul, was a persecutor of Christians uh, before he converted to his faith. And so uh, there is hope. There is hope for him. Hope eternal. Uh, Saint Clotitude is the saint of disappointing children. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, these, where are these t-shirts? These are the t-shirts. These are the trading cards that need to be celebrated. Um, St. Eligius is the saint of gas station workers. He was the saint, patron saint of metalsmithing and horses, but cars came into being, and so his title had to evolve with times. Uh, saint Friard, he is uh, the saint of those against the fear of wasps. And it happened because he had some antagonists that were against him, and so he, uh, which is kind of cool because Elijah does this in the book of Kings where the kids come out and make fun of him because he's got a bald head. And so he calls a she-bear out to devour the children. It's a great, great Bible story uh, for bald men anyway uh, to keep kids in line. Uh, but this guy, he had these antagonists and so he prayed for wasps to come and sting them to deter them from their, uh, their efforts. St. Barbara is... Uh, the saint, patron saint of fireworks. Yes, right? So she was forced by her dad to marry, and she refused. So uh, she was beheaded. And soon after that, uh, her father was struck by lightning and killed. And so justice, well, yes. So patron saint of fireworks. Uh, saint Patrick, uh, the patron saint of the fear of snakes. Uh, saint Columbanus is the patron saint of motorcyclists. We need one of those, right? Uh, saint Dra uh, Drosnius is the saint of invisible, in invincible people. Invincible people. I've not met those people. I don't know where they live. Maybe in the Marvel Comics universe, right? Um, uh, <laughs> saint Theodore of, of Sycon is the saint both for rain and against rain. So he's got you covered either way. He's going to take care of you. Right now, we need to kind of be against the rain. Um, saint Malo, he is the patron saint of pig keepers. So you think about that when, uh, when you think about Charlie, which I think also makes him the patron saint of bacon. It's got to, right? It's just got to, like, if you're going to do one, you got to come with the other. Uh, St. Bibiana is the, and the next ones, these are like for maybe college kids, maybe, I'm just saying. St. Bibiana is the patron saint of hangovers. St. Vetus, uh, the patron saint of oversleeping. Uh, and St. Arnold, the patron saint of beer. And the, the legend goes that thirsty people prayed to him so they could provide what they lacked. And after their prayer, a pot of beer appeared. I don't know. Uh, saint Genesis is the patron saint of clowns, movies, actors, plumbers, torture victims. So that group kind of all is together. I don't know. Uh, and, then, and then these are just some cool ones. So Saint Philip uh, Neri. Uh, this guy was just kind of a clown uh, as a priest. Uh, he, would, he would go to these visitations and he would, he would shave off like half of his beard. Uh, and so people, like, 
And then when he would speak, he'd always mispronounce words and, and pronounce them wrong and, and read scripture wrong and, and, and never correct himself. Like he'd just kind of go through it. And that was kind of like his joke. Like he'd leave in hysterics after his sermons because he thought that just was hilarious uh, to have everyone <laughs> confused uh, and befuddled. Uh, and then St. John Bosco, who, who would go out and he would teach the children of the village uh, juggling and, and acrobatics and magic tricks. Uh, and he was, so, he was so filled with joy that, that people thought he was mad. Uh, in fact, there were enough priests that he disrupted uh, that there was a coup to get him put into an insane asylum. And so they went to go capture him to take him to an insane asylum and he figured out what was going on, and so he got them into the carriage and shut the door and sent the carriage rider on and said, head, head to the same asylum, they're expecting him. So he was, he was this prankster, and this, just this man who was so full of joy that people thought, uh, thought he was mad, thought he was crazy. And, and it's a, those are testaments, right? Think, what are you known for? What are you, how are you seen? Are you, are, do people see you and, and, and see you filled with joy, see your life filled with, with, with life, uh, with vigor, with, with excitement because of the hope and the trust and the belief that we celebrate in the resurrection that, that Christ has reversed the curse of Adam and that life now enters back into this space. Again, not that we're void of conflict and not that we're void of pain and not that we're void of these things in this existence, but that beyond that, Christ is more. And Jesus offers us this. He, he, he encourages these things before his resurrection. Uh, as, he's, as he's preparing for this in, in John's gospel, uh, he says, uh, before he's betrayed, before his physical suffering, before his death on the cross, he says in John 15, 11, uh, I've told you these things so, you, so that you'll be filled with joy. And so that your joy will, will overflow. And then in, in chapter 16, he continues on with this. And he says, I tell you these things so that you can have peace in me. Get at peace in me. Not peace apart from me. Uh, not peace away from me. But that in me you will have peace. For here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows. But take heart because I have overcome the world. So we can overcome the world as we are in Christ. That's the joy and the hope that we hold on to, that we get to sit in as we watch this. And so we hope for this, we, we look for this, we move for this, that, that joy should, should radiate from our life and from our stories and from our engagements, that people think of us in regards to, uh, after the fact, the way that they think of the saints as, what is the story that they left? What is the peace that we'll remember them for? And so let that be the image that you remember, that the joy of Christ, who is risen from the dead, who sees his friends again, who eats breakfast, makes breakfast for them on the beach, who, who shows up and shows him the wounds in his incarnation and then asks them for food that they may have to eat. Let that be the image that you carry forward in joy and in laughter, that we celebrate the resurrection, that we see it through the lens of the good news that Christ is, in fact, alive. And that should bring us hope. And that should bring us life. And that should bring us courage as we reach out in a world that's searching for those things. Let's pray. God, thank you for today. And thank you for the resurrection of Christ. And thank you for, for the ability to, to laugh and to prank and to, and to stel, sell, uh, share good stories uh, and, and good jokes. And that we can, that in laughter we can find safety we can find uh, a, a unique bond that binds us together uh, in Christ and in that gift and that we can experience the life uh, that that was stolen through Adam and restored uh, through Jesus let us live in that and let us experience that and move towards that hope in your name we pray amen so typically this is when we do our time of connecting, and I thought the best way for us to do the time of connecting this morning is by the sharing of humor, humorous anecdotes and jokes. And so uh, we're going to open it up, uh, similar to the way we do praises and petitions. If you have a joke that you'd like to share, you can even look it up on your phone if you need to, if you don't have one ready. But if you have a joke to share, you're welcome to do that. So I, I've got a few that were emailed in of people that knew they weren't going to be able to be here. So the question was, if April showers bring May flowers, then what do May flowers bring? Thank you, pilgrims. This is from Kathy. 
Uh, and then Jim, Jim said this, uh, two boys are walking home after church talking about the sermon, and, and one asked the other, so, um, you know, what do you, what do you think about the devil and, and all this stuff? And the other one says, well, you, you know how Santa Claus thing turned out, and, and the Easter Bunny, that thing turned out? It's probably your dad. <laughs> uh, and then another one, uh, did, did I see Chastain? Chastain, do you know how to get a guitar player to play softly? What's that? G- give him sheet music. Yeah, it's just can't. It's <laughs> so, uh, any jokes? Any jokes you have to share? I see John Ray here, so we could be in for a treat. We have a joke? Does she want to run the mic? Oh, magic. Even better. All right. We're going to do this. Does she need a table? Oh, okay. I love it. Magic trick. Here we go. This is not witchcraft. Nobody needs to over-exaggerate. Hold on, hold on. I can help you. All right. Wait, wait. All right, go again. I have a ball, and I'm going to hide it. Abracadabra. Whoa! You just got rid of it! Can you do it again? Can you do it one more time? All right. I saw this up close. She's got a ball. She's got her little cup. I have a ball. Keena's got the ball now. No, she's hiding it. She's hiding it. And then she puts the lid on the cup. Abracadabra. Ball. Give her a hand. Give her a hand. All right. Come on, other jokes. Do you want to run the mic for us? If anybody's got a joke. Oh, come on. Y'all pretend like you're not funny. Oh, right over. There we go. Okay. How do you get warm in a cold room? How do you get warm in a cold room? You go into the corner, it's always 90 degrees. (laughs) Uh, uh. All right. John Ray's not going to disappoint. We know it. I don't know if this is a joke or not, but I use this all the time when I start talking to anybody that has kids. Uh, I said, yeah, me and Carol, we had three, and we named them all after Old Testament names. I said, oh, really? What were they? And I quickly say, Samuel, Rachel, and Satan. And you can see their expression. <laughs> well, you say, what? <laughs> yeah, don't ever call your kid Lucifer or Adolf. Save that for the pit bull. <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of corny, but it's why did the chicken cross the road? The restrooms were cleaner on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Denise. All right. I'm not very funny, I know, but. Uh, <laughs> What, I wrote it down, what happens if life gives you melons? That's right, you're dyslexic. (laughs) Some of you will figure that out in about 15 minutes and you'll laugh and that'll be okay. I have two jokes. Okay, so picture this. Mr. and Mrs. Unicorn are sitting on the sofa in their house and Mr. Unicorn's reading the newspaper. And he says, looks like there's a storm a-brewing. And Mrs. Unicorn says, well, I'm really happy we didn't go on that cruise thinking with your nut job friend Noah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and the other one, um, okay, so there's a, a group of insects sitting around the dining table getting ready to eat. And one says to Mr. Mantis, Mr. Mantis, would you say grace? Mr. Mantis rolls his eyes and he thinks to himself, 
Why do I always have to say the prayer? <laughs> okay, I just Googled these. So um, here's one from George Burns. The secret of a good sermon is to have a good beginning and a good ending and to have the two as close together as possible. <laughs> and, and then here's one for the, for the little kids. A Sunday school teacher asked the children just before she dismissed them to go to church, and why is it important to be quiet at church? And little Annie replied, because people are sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> Work your way across. What is the best way to keep an entire congregation in suspense? <laughs> All the way over, Petey's Pete, got one. <laughs> Does it have to be church related? Well, it's, uh, just I guess appropriate. Well, it's kind of sick, but there's no bad words. Okay. Guy's in the hospital, the doctor comes in to see him, and he said, well, I have some good news and some bad news. He said, which do you want first? And he said, well, give me the bad news first. Maybe the good news will cheer me up. And he said, well, the bad news is we're going to have to cut off both your legs. And he said, oh, my gosh, what's the good news? He said, well, the guy down the hall wants to buy your shoes. <laughs> Okay, so what's the difference between a good joke and a bad joke? Timing. <laughs> Come on, here's your chance. I know most of you can't tell the jokes in here. All right, Mike. Mike. <laughs> All right, so why are all hot dogs alike? Because they're inbred. <laughs> All the way in the back. <laughs> That's it. It's, it works. Okay. What kind of church does this? Anyway. <laughs> okay. So there's a blonde walking along the river, and she, she looks across the river, and she sees another blonde, and she yells over to the blonde, how do I get to the other side? And the other blonde yells back, you're already there. <laughs> oh. As you head into your week, may you have a joyful heart and a holy sense of humor. May God grant you the gift of faith to be renewed and share with others each day. May you live in this moment only looking neither to the past with regret nor the future with apprehension. And may love be your guide and your life a prayer. So go now in laughter and go in grace and keep the Lord in your heart and a smile upon your face. May God be with you. Go in God's peace.